Hello, my name is Mark Sandoval, and I am the Health Ministries Director of the Gulf States Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, and coming to bring you more information now about the coronavirus and things that you can do for treatment. But before I continue, let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your blessings, and we thank you that you have loved us so much. And Lord, we ask for your wisdom, your insights, as we discuss these important things at this time. Draw us each close to you, we pray, and work out your will, uh, your goodness, through the evil intentions of the enemy. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we are continuing from a, a prior discussion about the prevention of uh, illnesses, including coronavirus, and now we are going to transition into treatment of it. Now, first of all, what I want to say is that there you need to be following uh, guidelines, regulations from your local uh, health departments and so on, whether it's in your state or your locality, um, based upon whatever is going on around you. And the information that I'm going to be sharing with you is general information that we know uh, and have experience with in dealing with things like influenza, but we have not specifically treated coronavirus before. And so we're making some assumptions. We're making some inferences that, that if you treat things similar to uh, influenza, flu, that you'll get similar types of results with the coronavirus, but we're not absolutely sure of that, but we suspect that it will be the case. So, and nothing that we're going to be talking about now takes the place of uh, advice from your physician or your healthcare provider because it does not take into consideration uh, your comorbid conditions, what medications that you're on, and so on. And so this doesn't take any, any place uh, of that advice. I am a physician. I am board certified in emergency medicine and lifestyle medicine, and I'm going to be speaking in general in regards to uh, what one might do. And uh, evidence that we have back from the last pandemic, the last large one, which was the Spanish flu in 1918, 1919, and things that were done at that time to help uh, significantly increase the survival rate of individuals that were infected during that pandemic. So with that introduction, we're going to dive right in. First of all, there are some early treatments that can be done that have been beneficial in other viral or respiratory infections. When you just start to feel sick, when you're just starting to get that scratchy sore throat, you're starting to feel a little bit of that achiness, maybe, um, you know, the, those really early signs of infection, there's three things that I suggest for you to choose amongst. One of those is the contrast shower. We talked about that last time in our prevention segment, but this time you want to do it a little bit more, um, uh, you want to do it for a longer period of time and uh, some more contrast than what you might have done previously. With a contrast shower, again, you're getting in the shower, you're starting with hot water, you're getting yourself warmed up, you're turning it to cold, and uh, if you're healthy and vigorous, then you're doing the dance because it can be quite cold in certain places. And uh, you're doing the cold for about 30 seconds. The hot's gonna be around three minutes, maybe up to five minutes, and then you're gonna do about 30 seconds of cold. Turning around under the shower, making sure you get uh, the different parts of your body nice and warm, and then nice and cold, and then you go back to the heat again. When you're doing this for the early development of infection, then you want to do so about five to seven exchanges. So you're going from hot to cold, 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 and maybe hot to cold and hot to cold. So up to seven times. Um, again, if uh, you're starting to feel lightheaded or anything like that, go ahead and stop the treatment. I would turn it on cold first uh, and then stop the treatment after the cold uh, because the cold tends to cause the blood vessels to constrict, increases blood flow to the brain uh, and helps, to, helps the muscles not to be so weak. Also, it might be helpful to use a shower chair during that treatment. Second thing that you can choose to do is a hot foot bath. Now, a hot foot bath, if you're a diabetic on medication, oral medication, then 103 degrees is about the maximum that you want to do. If you're insulin dependent, you have to have insulin shots, or you have really poor circulation, or if you have blood clots in the legs, don't do this. 
right? Don't do this. Um, for the rest of individuals, and if you have open wounds. Uh, rest of people can tolerate it f fairly well. Um, choose water that's about as hot as you think is tolerable for you. Uh, typically temperatures will go up to around 110 degrees for individuals. But uh, make the water hot, put it in a basin, and the basin or bucket needs to be big enough that you can comfortably put both feet in and have water levels up to your ankles. And so you're going to cover the, cover the ankles with the water, keep your feet in that hot water, and then wrap up with uh, blankets or sheets and uh, have some water there so that you can drink and you can stay hydrated hydrated and uh, and for about 20 minutes to 30 minutes you just sit with your feet in hot water you can sit on the edge of the bathtub and fill the bathtub that deep and just leave it there or if it's in a smaller basin you might have to have some hotter water that you can pour into it and in the side not directly on your feet and uh, in order to help warm up the water and keep it warm at the very end of the treatment you get cold water and pour it over your feet dry off and, uh, and that's the end of your treatment. The third option is a hot bath or a hot or a fever bath. And there you drop the water about as hot as you can tolerate it. Get into the tub, put a towel over your legs and up your chest so that you can cover those areas that are usually out of the water. And you can have a cup or something to ladle water on your knees and on your chest. And uh, just stay under the water. You can use a bowl with ice water and a washcloth to, to make your head nice and cool. And, uh, and, and just Stay in there in that hot water for about 20 to 30 minutes. Again, if you're feeling uncomfortable, go ahead and stop the, you know, stop the bath. Most people know how to take a bath. And uh, this is just to work up a really good sweat and to try to get the temperature level up a bit. If you have a thermometer, then you can measure that temperature and, uh, and see where it's going. But temperature elevations actually are good when it comes to infections because it helps the immune system to deal with that infection. After each of these three treatments, you don't have to do them all, but you can choose one that works best for you. Uh, then dry off, go to bed and rest for at least an hour and make sure that you have some water there so you can drink and remain hydrated while you're sweating afterwards. Uh, Many times, and I've had this experience many times myself, when you start feeling sick and you do one of these treatments, it can help with dealing with the infection very early on so that you don't have any more symptoms associated with it. So that's an early treatment. What happens if things continue progressing? Well, again, as I mentioned in the last, um, the last presentation or the last segment on, on uh, coronavirus, God is the healer. These things that we use are simply our way of responding to God, cooperating with Him, and allowing Him to bring about His health and healing to us. And so with any of these treatments, pray. Begin with prayer. Ask God to bless the treatment, to bring about health, and then trust in Him to do so while you cooperate with Him. Now, the next thing that I want to recommend after prayer in these situations is rest. Uh, rest, looking at, what do I mean by rest? I don't mean just sleep, I mean strict bed rest. If you're getting sick and you're starting to develop respiratory symptoms, and there might even be a concern that it might be, you know, coronavirus, you don't know whether it's coronavirus or flu or whatever, strict bed rest. That was shown to be very beneficial in the Spanish flu. In fact, several locations, including a seminary, that treated their students or their patients with strict bed rest when they developed the Spanish flu back in 1918-1919. And uh, that strict bed, bed rest should last for as long as the fever is elevated and for at least two to three days after the fever resolves or two to three days after the symptoms begin to improve significantly. So, and that's bed, except for bathroom breaks. You can, you know, sit up and eat and do whatever, but bed rest and staying in bed. That's an important one. Another one that you can do, and this was, again, one that was used in the, uh, the lifestyle centers, the sanitariums that were doing hydrotherapy back in the 1918-1919 Spanish flu, who, that they had significantly lower rates of death associated with uh, 
the Spanish flu infection than the surrounding population did. And that treatment is hot and cold fomentations to the chest with a hot foot bath. Now, what do you do for that? Well, you get in, you first of all, cover the bed with a some plastic or a shower curtain or something like that so that you can protect the bed from water. You get a basin of water or a bucket or something that you can put both feet in comfortably and get the water levels up to at least the ankle and not uh, tip over on the bed. And when you get in bed, you put your feet in that hot water, you cover yourself with blankets and you get a heating pad and put the heating pad behind your upper back so that it's behind your, your neck and your upper chest, basically on the backside. And you're laying down on the heating pad, so that's warming the backside. And then on the front, what you're doing is you're getting hot, wet towels, or you're getting fomentation pads, or you're getting uh, a heating pad that has a moist towel, maybe that's wrapped around it or so on. Something that's moist and wet and hot but not so hot that it burns. You wanna check it and make sure that it's not burning. Um, and you put that maybe a layer or two layers of, of dry towel underneath and then that hot towel in there and then wrap it up in order to hold the heat. And uh, if it's not getting hot enough, you can remove one of the dry layers. And if it's still not hot enough, you can remove the next one and put it directly against the skin. Again, always monitoring to make sure that it's not too hot. You leave that hot on the chest for three minutes and then you take it off and you get some ice water with a washcloth and you get that washcloth and you rub it on the chest and you rub, 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 rub for about 30 seconds and then you put the hot back on. Now, if it's a heating pad, you don't have to redo things. If it's a wet towel, you might have to heat it back up again, whether it's in the microwave or boiling water or whatever you use. There are instructions for, for doing fomentations on Uchi Pines website. That's U-C-H-E-E-P-I-N-E-S dot O-R-G. And, uh, and then there's a section on there for COVID-19. And under there, there's a, a thing for fomentations about how to do those and the other treatments that we'll discuss as well. And it will also be on the Health Ministries website at Gulf States Conference. Now, those fomentations, uh, you're doing those back and forth, three minutes hot, 30 seconds cold, three minutes hot, 30 seconds cold. You do that for five to seven exchanges. And uh, make sure the individual has some water to drink while they're going through that. Um, and, uh, and then when you're done, you pour some cold water over the feet cover up with sheets and rest for uh for again you're in bed rest so you're going to rest and make sure that you're drinking water in order to uh, maintain well hyd your your hydration status and uh, when do you repeat well if your temperature if you were running a fever and your temperature goes back up again that's the time to repeat it or two or three times uh, during the day that can be helpful or beneficial the other thing is a fever bath. What's a fever bath? Again, it's just getting into the bathtub. Uh, hot water, as hot as you can tolerate it. Having a thermometer to measure your temperature, your oral temperature in your mouth. A bowl with ice water and a washcloth so you can keep your head cool. And water in a cup with a straw so that you can drink. And then at least two towels. One that you can put in the tub with you to go over your chest and your knees. And another one to dry off afterwards. And what you want to do is you want to aim at bringing your oral temperature up to about 102 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, again, if you have health conditions, you're on medications and so on, you might you, you are going to want to refer to your physician first to make sure that these are going to be okay with your conditions. If you ask them if you can take a hot bath like that and if you can maintain a fever of 102. Um, most of us can, and so this is aimed at most of us. Maintain that temperature for about, a, about 20 minutes. And then you can, uh, you can have a cold shower afterwards or turn the water on cold and put some of it on you or take that ice water that you were putting on your head and <sighs> that's really cold when you do it. Um, done it before. And, uh, and then you dry off, get in bed. Again, you stay there, you sweat, 
you have some water to make sure that you remain hydrated. And uh, again, if you've got heart failure, if you've got open wounds, if you can't tolerate jogging, this would not be the tra treatment for you because it's almost like putting your heart in the process of going on a jog. Um, what's another thing that you can do? You can do an onion poultice. This is something that we have used at our Lifestyle Center to help individuals with respiratory infections. You get a half of a medium or large onion and you stick it in the blender with just enough water in order so that it can blend. You take it out, you get a piece of paper towel and uh, you, you smear out that, that uh, onion that you have blended on the paper towel, fold it over so it's almost like a sandwich and you put that on the chest. Then you cover it with plastic wrap, like saran wrap or plastic food wrap. You can either do so just on the area and tape it down, or you can wrap it all the way around a few times, or you can use bandages or something in order to leave it in place. Put on a, uh, a t-shirt, something that you don't mind getting smelly, and, uh, and then you can put on a sweater over top of that and leave it on overnight. Leave it on overnight and then take it off and wash it off in the morning and repeat as you need to. That helps a lot of times with helping with the congestion. We've had individuals that have significant improvements with their respiratory, with their ability to breathe, and uh, with congestion with just using a simple onion poultice. Uh, one other thing is nature's penicillin. Nature's penicillin, you get one orange, you get one grapefruit, you get two lemons, and you get three cloves of garlic. And you get those and you blend them up whole in a blender, all together. Uh, of course, you peel the garlic, but um, you blend them up all together. And then when you're done, you add in three drops of peppermint oil, mix it all up, and then you put that aside and you drink it throughout the day about a cup of it throughout the day. I found it to be beneficial in my own uh, health situation and with others too that we're dealing with infections. And of course, uh, if you are uh, sick, you want to contact your doctor or your local health center and follow their instructions. Many of these things are probably going to be used by a larger portion of the population if or when we get to the place where the hospital systems are overloaded and you have to deal with things at home rather than going to the hospital. Now finally, what do we do with recovery? You've been ill, you've been doing these things, you're recovering and starting to get better. First of all, rest. Make sure that you continue the bed rest. Again, at least two to three days after your last fever or after your symptoms have significantly improved. Or if you had fever for five days, some of the recommendations are to stay in bed for another five days afterwards. What you want to avoid is getting out and working early and, and having consequences of that. A number of individuals did that back in the Spanish flu. They felt like they recovered from the illness and then they didn't stay in bed rest. They got active too soon and then they developed a pneumonia associated with it and, and some of them died from the pneumonia that they got in reaction to getting out of bed too early. So maintain that rest, right? And uh, after you are out of bed and not just in bed rest, well, make sure that you get to bed early each day after that. In the recovery phase, well, just like prevention, contrast showers you can use on a daily basis to help as well. You, again, you wanna limit the work that you're doing. If you're tired, you're weak, or you're fatigued, take a break, get a rest. Don't push yourself because you, your immune system is using a lot of energy in, 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 in order to recover from this condition and so you don't want to push it, right? You just don't want to push it. And uh, outdoor life, spend time outdoors, a lot of time outdoors in the fresh air and sunshine. Uh, make sure that you have appropriate clothing for the climate so that you're not getting chilled. Make sure that you're covering evenly your trunk, your shoulders, your arms, your legs, as so everything is evenly covered. So you don't have like a lot of layers of clothing here on the trunk and then arms are exposed, legs are exposed and so on. Make sure you avoid cheer chilling, that will not be good for you. And then as we talked about at the very beginning of the prevention segment, keep in a cheerful state of mind. The impact of your thoughts and your attitudes 
uh, on your recovery, but also your prevention is huge. And so thanking God that you're recovering, practicing gratitude to him for all the things that he has given. Uh, we are told that in all things, we should give thanks and giving thanks does the body good. So maintain that, that cheerful state of mind and gratitude to God. And I just want to leave you with this final quote from Exodus 15:26. We're told, if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. So he's the healer. All of these are simply means that we can cooperate with him in that healing process, but again, trusting in him to bring that healing. And I pray that, uh, that you don't have to use any of these treatment methods. I hope that we can prevent it, not have to go there. But if you do, and especially again, if the hospital systems are overwhelmed and uh, they're not able to take any more patients, these are things that you can do at home and you can help out with others at home. Again, maintaining good strict cleanliness guidelines and uh, not picking up the virus yourself. And uh, before we close, I wanna close with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your abundant blessings. And Lord, I just pray that you be with my brothers and sisters that are out there. Grant them peace, help them to realize that you are in control. You have not lost control just because this is going on. And we can put our hope and trust in you, but we must do so in cooperating with you and uh, help us to cooperate with you well and bring about your good will and way in our lives, we pray. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Again, my name is Mark Sandoval, and it's a pleasure to be able to spend this time together, and may we prayerfully and wisely use these things to help in our own health and with the health of our friends and family.